Hey everybody, it's Nick with Millennial Think Tank checking back in. In this video, I'm going to talk about the GMAT. Those who don't know what the GMAT is, probably not applying to business school. If you're applying to business school, there's two tests you can take. You can take the GRE and the GMAT. The GRE is newer, like widely accepted test. The GMAT is a more standard test, I should say. I guess I could say it factors into the rankings of the school. So the GMAT, if you're going to take it. You kind of want to make sure you get a good score, a score that you can help to help your chances getting in. If like you're on the edge of like GPA and other things like that, you want to make sure you, if you can, because the GMAT is the only thing you can control that in your essays. You can't really control your letter of recommendation. I mean, I guess you could write the letter for them, but if they're writing the letter for you, you really can't control what, this, what they'll say. Everyone's going to have a letter of recommendation that says something good. And your essay, it's only like 500 words. Yes, you could write a beautiful essay that can help you get in. But, you know, they're going to look at the essays don't factor into the rankings. That's what one of the mission counselors told me. Essays don't factor, factor into the rankings. So if you're on the edge and someone has a good essay, maybe yours is an A plus and theirs is a A minus, but they have like 20 points on the GMAT, like who knows, you know? So if you can, you invest the time and get as high as GMAT score as you possibly can. Talking to a different missions a counselor, they said if you can get like 40 points, don't quote me on this, this is what I heard from different people, you can get like 40 points over the school's average score, you really, really increase your chances of getting in because off the bat, you're boosting up the score, like their average score. Like you're pulling up their score in a way, quote unquote, improving their program. So in the rankings by GMAT score, it help a lot. So if you can help from day one, improve the score, they don't have to project out what you're gonna do. And they know that you can handle it. Cause also when you're doing on the GMAT, you wanna see what type of quant scores the schools are looking for. Cause they, they wanna see if you can handle the quantitative part of their program. Cause these top schools or whatever school you're going into is gonna have a lot of quant in it. They wanna make sure you can handle that. The verbal, they look at it, you know, that really helps boost your score because you can boost your score a lot more doing better on the verbal than you can on the, the math, the, the quant. Because I think you can you can get uh, 52 points on the GMAT. I think you can get 51 points and not be in the 90th percentile. It's really crazy how, how tight the, I think you'll be in the 89th percentile. And it's like, that's crazy. Like so many people get into that. Because it's percentiles, not percentages or anything like that. So you can get a real high quant score. And, and that won't help as much as if you got a 50 on the um, verbal. And a 50 in the verbal, I think it'd be like in the 99. Nine, it might be in the 100 percentile. Because you got, uh, you got a, that's just how the test breaks down. People focus on the quant because the quant is very important. But I digress. So I'm going to talk about the GMAT. I decided to take the GMAT. I figured I might be able to, you know, get a good score and how my chances of getting in. My G GPA wasn't the greatest and my essays, I, I didn't know how they would be. So I wanted to give myself a good chance. And the, the GMAT is the only thing really you can change. So I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just give it a try, just go ahead and take it. So I go ahead and take the GMAT, I get a 510. I'm deflated because at this point in my life, I'm looking in my job, I'm not making as much money as I wanted to make. And I said to myself, you know what, MBA, I just got to school the only way I really knew how you can improve yourself is going to school. So I said, you know, I'll take this time, go back, get my graduate degree. I, I was gonna go to try and go to University of Baltimore here in Baltimore. And, you know, I got the 510, I was kind of scared to know what type of school I can get into because I've seen people get 600, 700. So I was kind of scared, but I knew what I was going to do. I knew I was going to try and go to a business school, you know, switch my career path because I found I really have a real passion for business. And I kind of did chemistry because that's what people expected from me. I know it's weird. I like it. And I don't know, maybe if the careers in chemistry were a little bit better, I wouldn't have found like this niche. Like I don't think I would have done like a, a blog or talking about chemistry. You see, I'm doing one talking about business and finance. You know, I kind of like that stuff a lot. So I'm sitting there, like, this is what I'm going to do, deflated. Like, how am I going to do this? You know what I'm saying? Because my plan was to get into school, 
be in the school first. And then, because I looked at my employee handbook, and all my employee handbook says is, well, pay for school if it gets approved. It doesn't have to say, it doesn't mean it has to do anything with your career you're doing right now. But I knew I would have to worry what I was going to do and make it tie back to my career so I can get the money to help pay for it. Because I really want to stay in my company because I work at a great company. That's what I was thinking it when I was doing this whole process. So I'm like, if I can get my tuition paid and, you know, stay here, get all the benefits and figure out, you know, just figure out life. So I'm like, you know what, threw caution to the wind. Maybe I proposed a lot, but this was a hiccup. I didn't think I was going to get into any schools with this type of score. So luckily, around the time I took the test, the QS World Tour in D.C. was coming up. So I'm there, to, you know, to see the different schools. I wanted to talk to the missing counselors to see what they would think. It was no one from like the, if you don't know what the World Tour is, it's like a community, not community fair, what is it, county fair for um, different business schools. No one like in the top 10 was there, but there's people from the top 25, maybe, and definitely top 50. People in the top 50 were there. I think College Park was there and a couple other really good schools were there. So I was sitting there like, what am I going to do? I'm talking to the schools. They were like, yeah, you really need to get it up. But I go there. They have like this little powwow pep talk where they talk about different admissions counselors talking about what they like to see. And so on the little list, they have a list and it's like, they tell you what all the booths are. They have like four or five booths of people who offer preparatory products, like um, different classes, online classes. You know, they have one that was just basically you just get like some online books not even a class or anything like that 500 next tier up online course 700 and then they had the manhattan prep course was just 1600 dollars. i'm like this must be it this must be the thing it is three more than three times as much as this cheap one this one is must be missing something or this one is overpriced so i hurry up do a quick google search look at it I'm like, oh this is a really good course so I go talk to the guy, tell him my situation. You know, I know he's a salesman, but I tell him, like, look, man, I got a 5'10". Can you guys help me? He's like, yeah, we can help you, you know. We get uh, people like that all the time. And then so he hands me the flyer. I look on the flyer, and it says, you're going to get $600 off. So $1,600, so go, it drops down to 1000 This, I'm, I'm high off of Tony Robbins' books and stuff like that. So I'm starting to think the universe is telling me, do it just do it like he's like i've never seen it go this low before just so and then i look online like it never goes down this low so i'm like maybe this is a sign to just do it and he says there's also like while he's doing that while i'm thinking this in my head he's like you can also test your after course you can take one class for free if you like it you can sign up if you don't like it no money down or anything like that so i'm like okay i could just go and see what they're talking about first 30 minutes of the class, they explain the concept on, because on the quant section, they have these type of questions. They give you a question, and you have to, they give you two different responses, A and B. And they say, is A sufficient to answer the question? Is B sufficient to answer the question? Is C, C is both of them together. D is either one of them. And E is neither. neither. So he writes on the board, I have this teacher, his name is Marcus. If you're in the DC class, you can take uh, Marcus's class. C writes on the board A, D, and then draws like a division sign and B, C, E at the bottom. He says, if it's not A, it can't be D. So D is both of them together. I mean, either one. So if it's not A, it can't be D. So don't even waste your time trying to do D. And then it's either B, C, or E. So you automatically gave yourself by doing one you increase your chances of getting it to one third you go from 20 percent to one third automatically just by doing that you need to take a guess after that it took you too long to get that you just take a guess b c or e hurry up pick b so i'm like great sign me up after i do that just that alone it's like they probably saved me five minutes on the quant just from that so i'm like okay great sign me up and to give you a little information about the teachers the dude marcus I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, sorry, Marcus, if you ever see this. So basically, these guys, they have different teachers, and like all of them getting the 700s on the quant. And that 700 is on the whole test consistently. Like That's what they have to do to be a, a 
a teacher there. So I'm like, God, I got a 510, you can get 700s, like it's nothing in your sleep. They give you like 12 bucks, 12 bucks from the Manhattan Prep, which are great bucks. Like they have it on everything, sentence corrections, reading comp, all the different sections of it. They have a book that breaks down like the fundamentals. They have fundamentals of reading, which is just the fund the fundamentals of reading or where it's just the fundamentals of reading, like the basic building blocks of reading, like because if you're from a foreign country or if you're like me, just bad at stuff like that, you can go back and fill in the missing blocks because, you know, not everybody got straight A's all through school. You might got a B and the stuff that you were missing to get that A is in these books. So you can go through that and then they have the fundamentals of quant fundamentals of math which I think more people need because you don't use like geometry ever in life ever except for when the GMAT and, and back in grade school and then your teacher they might not have taught you everything you know they skip over different sections and books so that's great you build off of that and then they have the books where it's like you apply it they have they have their own individual books for a sentence correction where they break it down to the section so you get into like a GMAT format so after you get your fundamentals up you can go practice on the different sections, which is great because everyone has different weaknesses. You can spend time on those weaknesses and get those weaknesses out of the way if you put that time in. And they have it for the math sections, algebra, geometry. They have all the sections that in there and they have an individual book dedicated to each one. Book's about this thick, but it has practice problems and where you can go into the, the big giant book of all questions. That they give you like it's usually green the official guide book the og book so and they give you the og book too in your course so the thousand dollars you get all those books and then with the also the thousand dollars you get you get 12 classes and they break down all of the different sections and they give the sections that you need a lot more time on more time and they give like the reading comp they don't give that much time on it because reading comp is kind of everyone's probably strongest point because like most people are good at reading and understand what they read and they don't give too much time on the stuff that doesn't matter on the GMAT as much like they don't give too much time on the writing they spend like one half a class on the writing section and uh, one half a class on the um, integrated reasoning because the, the integrated reason doesn't really count towards too many business schools as of yet too many business schools like factor it in to selecting students so they don't spend too much time on it because you're paying you get like 12, it's 12 classes, so you're paying, so they want you to learn what you need to know, which I appreciate, because you're paying $1,000, most of the time $1,600. So that's pretty good. And the classes, they they were good, they break it down, and you can ask these guys any question, and they'll be able to answer it, which is really great. And it, it helped me out a lot. I didn't get a top score, I had a 510, which was 600. <laughs> yeah, so I, I remember I jumped like 100 points. And so it's just pretty cool, you know, like if you already had a 600, you might be able to jump up to a 700. You know, it's it's a really good course. You guys should check it out inside the course. There's also, each course is as long as the GMAT, like the GMAT sections, and you get two 15-minute breaks just like on the GMAT. You get the two 10-minute breaks just like on the GMAT. So it structures you to learn in the GMAT format and get used to that GMAT time crunch. And I drove every day from Carroll County to DC. I drove like two hours every day. Not every day, once a week to go to that class. And then an hour back to go back to Baltimore to take this class. Really enjoyed it and it really helped. It boosts my score up. Also, a little hack. If you go to all, you get three makeup classes. So if you go to all the 12 sessions, you could still use the makeup classes if you want to. So you can have, if you can, you can time it right. If you have sections that are especially weak, you can go and learn from another teacher, you know, um, see a different learning style. That also helped me out. Had the, like I said, sentence correction was a really weak point. So I used my, saved up my three classes and went and took the three um, sections, like the three sections on, on the verbal, because the verbal was my weakest point. And the verbal is where you can make the sl smaller improvements mean more on the verbal than on the quant. Because the quant, um, what is it the quant percentiles are really skewed so i said if i'm gonna spend this extra time i'm gonna spend it on what can boost my score the most so i did that and i got to take it with uh pedro pedro l pedro lamara 
He's a good teacher. He might actually be better than Marcus. 